And the whole idea, look, you guys got a freaking certified tour guide up here. How are we not going to do a tour, baby? It's time for a tour with Todd. Hello. Oh, look at that. That's me. Hey, there's me again. I used to do tours. Oh, there's me too. That's cool. And then there's me. I don't know what the hell that is. And then there is the dabbing rat. All right, cool. So today we're going to do a little tour of another neighborhood. We've done a bunch of neighborhoods. We're seven shows in, man. We've done six different neighborhoods. I did that math just now. Pretty impressive. And today we're going to be doing a tour of a very neighborhood ge geographically close to us, right across the river. Some of you guys may have been there. You guys know Williamsburg? Because you're about to. Yeah. It's more than just kids like that. That's right. That guy. It's more than that, though, man. It's got tons of history, tons of rich cultural history. It's an amazing place. And of course, there is plenty of hipsters. So that's good. And that's fine. That's fine. But I'm going to talk a little bit about Williamsburg. Let's get started, baby. All right. So this guy here is Richard Woodhull, right? This is the guy who in 1792 bought a lot of this land and wanted to kind of create, you know, a little suburb outside of the city. That's what people do, right? Well, it was a complete failure, unfortunately. It wasn't until the 1800s that it started to take off. By then, he was long gone. And as a punishment to this guy and his stupid idea, now his name is on the worst hospital in New York. <laughs> Don't ever go here, or you'll end up leaving looking like this. <laughs> okay, that's me. That was me when I went there. Uh, okay. Anyways, it's called Williamsburg because of a man named John Williams. John Williams was the man who actually surveyed the land. It was called Williamsburg after him. They bounced around a few names, but eventually settled on Williamsburg. Uh, and I, I couldn't find a picture of him. And I know you guys are all visual learners, so here's an artist rendering. Uh, <laughs> He was the guy who laid it out, right? So it's named after him, Williamsburg. Also important to know, H. H. H was what it was in it before, Williamsburg. <laughs> right? That's what it was. I guess that's how you pronounce it. You can still see it on the old Williamsburg Savings Bank building. It's the, the one right, right next to the, the bridge. Uh, it got replaced by this building here later on in uh, downtown Brooklyn. You know this building. Everyone knows this building. It looks suspiciously like... Uh, a chapstick container. <laughs> okay, you perverts. All right, anyways, here's the, here's the trajectory. All right, it starts out as a village in 1827. It's a little village, starts growing. It becomes a town in 1840, and then a city in 1852 separating itself from Bushwick. Bushwick was actually, was actually one of the towns. I'll show you here. So it grew because of ferries and roads. This is one of the reasons why Woodhull failed. He didn't have any roads taking you in to Long Island. Once those were built in the early 1800s, it slowly started to grow. This actually is Fillmore Place. It's still there. You guys know where it is, right off of Metropolitan there? This is Millard Fillmore. Anyone know who he is? President. Yeah, president. He was a president. He's not the current president, sorry. Um, I hope that's not what they said. <laughs> he's my president. Um, no, he was the president. Uh, he's actually famous for the, the Compromise of 1850, uh, when they took all that land from the Mexican-American War. He tried to make a compromise over the issue of slavery, led to civil war. So not a very good president, but you know, what can you do? This guy here is uh, Henry Miller. He also lived in this area. This is his house. Pretty cool. You can guys go walk by it. This guy made a novel that was a huge scandal, Tropic of Cancer, if you guys ever heard of it. A lot of, uh, dare I say, sex. Yeah, I know. Please, don't leave the show. I know that's a very, very tough to handle. Anyways, here, we're going to talk about Brooklyn here. Now, first of all, this is one thing you guys need to know about Brooklyn. Brooklyn was actually one of the original six towns of Brooklyn, right? There was actually six towns during the Dutch time when it got took, taken over by the British, and it just happened to spread out and swallow up all the other towns, becoming its own city in the 1800s. Pretty cool, right? Now, now in the mid-1800s, Brooklyn swallowed up Williamsburg, and it became part of Brooklyn, the city of Brooklyn, and it became industry, baby. You had the Domino Sugar Factory, right? You guys know the Domino Sugar Factory? Hecla Ironworks. Today, you might know the Domino Sugar Factory as this park, you know, where you can go and hang out, buy a $30 burrito, pretty cool. <laughs> and you may know Hecla Ironworks as Brooklyn Bowl. Ah, a pretty cool little place where you can go bowling on one side and you can listen to, you know, really loud music and, you know, keep it down, you kids, while you're trying to bowl on the other side. Pretty cool. Also, a little trivia. You guys can use this. <laughs> no big deal. Domino Sugar uh, invented the sugar packet. <laughs> yeah. There's your ticket, money's worth right there, baby. When you guys are walking through Domino Sugar or Domino Park on your little dates, your little dating app dates, you know, you guys are look pretty well off. You guys are probably using the old uh, J.P. Morgan Chase banking app to find your dates. I don't know. You'll walk through there, walk through there, and tell your date, tell your date, be like, hey, you know, they invented the the, the sugar packet, and your date 
your date is gonna look at you in the eye and freeze. <laughs> and it's 2023, so I'll be gender neutral. Their romper's gonna fall right to the ground. <laughs> and you're gonna remember this face. All right, let's keep it moving, all right. So look, another thing that it's famous for, immigrants, baby. Immigrants have been pouring into Williamsburg since the beginning in the mid 1800s and late 1800s specifically too, was the Germans. The Germans, and one of the reasons was because of all the breweries they had in Bushwick and some also in Williamsburg. So they came over. I don't know if you guys know Germans look kind of like uh, this. <laughs> but uh, one of the little, little uh, holdovers from those days, you got Peter Luger. Peter Luger was from back in those days. It dates back to when the Germans were here. It's now owned by a different family, but the name and all that it started out in this little pool room. Now it's one of the fanciest steakhouses in New York. Pretty cool. Let's keep it moving. All right. Industry. Mm, speaking of Germans, I don't know if you guys know who this guy is. German immigrant, Charles Pfizer. Yeah, he started Pfizer in Williamsburg. Look at that. Huh? You guys aren't reacting as if this guy didn't solve, you know, Bob Dole's boner problems. Come on. <laughs> Give him his just desserts. This guy did a lot of good for the world. All right, we'll keep moving. Under the bridge, baby. 1903, the Williamsburg Bridge is open because Brooklyn is exploding. 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge is finished. Brooklyn starts growing, growing, growing. They needed a new bridge. 1903, the Williamsburg Bridge becomes the longest suspension bridge in the world by surpassing the Brooklyn Bridge. And afterwards, more immigrants pour in, baby. Now we're, t uh, also about this guy's Henry Hornbostel. I thought it'd be funny to put a honk if you're horny. You know, it's kind of, okay, anyways. I'm juvenile. All right, let's keep moving. <laughs> immigrants, when immigrants, so the Italians come over. Now remember, the Williamsburg Bridge is right next to like the Lower East Side, all that area, so who's gonna flow over? Well, the Italians had settled in Little Italy at that point, right? So their overflow comes into Williamsburg, and you have here the Giglio. If any of you guys have been able to go to the Giglio Festival, really cool, actually. Uh, more on that later, but it's a part of the Germans, or the Italians, they're still left. Also the Jews, the first wave comes over in the early 1900s. Once again, Lower East Side, tons of Jewish immigrants there from the Eastern Europe, Russia. They also overflow. This is actually part of the Satmar sect. They came over more in the mid-1900s. We'll talk about that as well. Now, Puerto Ricans too, baby. The Puerto Ricans, now this, I use migrants because they're technically, well, we'll talk about this later, but they're technically part of the United States. Whole nother thing, we'll get into that. But they come over here into Williamsburg as well. One of the reasons they came over here was for that industry. Unfortunately, that industry was leaving, baby. It was becoming terrible here. Industries leaving the cities, right? They go to cheaper land outside, highways are developed, they're going other places. So no work, right? So Williamsburg becomes a little run down, unfortunately. And you have what's called white flight. This sounds like, you know, uh, the KKK's failed airline or something, but it's actually a real thing. It happened in the mid-1900s. And this is when all the white people and the prosperous people or whatever of the cities left. And the only people who left in the cities were people who couldn't leave. And one of the reasons was because of this. If you don't know what this map is referring to, you should do some research on this because I don't have enough time to go into this. It's called redlining. And Williamsburg, a big part of Williamsburg, was redlined. That's how bad it was. It was redlined, meaning it was telling banks, do not loan to people here. And the reason was because under those redlining guidelines, they said, don't loan to neighborhoods that have immigrants, that have minorities. That was a literal thing. So it's no surprise that the suburbs became completely white because that was by design. Anywho, that's depressing. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> you keep going, and guess what happens? You have a neighborhood rundown, people stay put, it's vacant, so who moves in? When you have a neighborhood that is, you know, pretty cheap, it's well located, who moves in? That's right, you guys can read. Artists, they move in, baby. So then what happens? You start having DIY spaces, you know, people are hanging out, it becomes cool. People are around there vaping. Whoa, cool. So once you get a little bit of this, this is 1992 actually, you can see that. This is, they, they did a thing, New Bohemia on Williamsburg. It becomes a cool place and all that, it's great. And then you have this book actually, it was written by Robert Anassi. He talks about how in the early 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, it was, the, it was the place to be. But then after a little while, what happens? You kick those artists out, baby. We don't need you. Go find a real job, loser. And then you do it by this, rezoning. In 2005, Bloomberg rezones all about 180 blocks of Williamsburg and Greenpoint. Now, all he did was take a neighborhood that's on the rise and basically rezone it for a lot of high-density residential, meaning people come in, they scoop up land, and their value shoots up overnight once it's rezoned because then they could build high-density you know, towers, which you see there now, right? Pretty crazy. Bloomberg, by the way, knew this wasn't gonna be unequal. Now, you may be thinking like, oh, okay, that's cool, that's what happens, but he did it also by design. This is a guy who has said, 
We, if we could get every billionaire in the world to move here, it would be a godsend. That is Bloomberg. He said that. He's also said, New York is a luxury product. That's what he said. And it reminds me of a quote that uh, I also heard on the F train, which is, uh, Bloomberg is kind of a dick. <laughs> you know, <laughs> shock. But this has uh, also precipitated an increase in costs, an increase in costs for rents, which guess what that means? It means you got to be able to pay that rent to occupy a space. So... Despite that, we've had some really great small businesses make their home in Williamsburg. Small businesses like Whole Foods uh, and the Apple Store. Uh, I haven't been in there yet, but I'm sure their produce is great. Uh, and you have Equinox. I don't know if you've heard of that. A really nice little wellness place. So these are the kind of businesses that can afford those rents, unfortunately. But it's in interesting, though, because I always tell people this, and I used to always tell people this, New York is never finished. New York is always becoming New York. It's never finished, and we all are a part of it. We're all here. We're not just passive. Uh, by the way, this is what I got as a picture when I Googled diversity. Uh, <laughs> so I just thought I'd show that. But it's important that we take part in it, man, because New York is never fully New York and it never is New York. Everything that you think in your brains that I love New York, what is that? It's diversity, it's hard work, it's dreaming, it's all those things. It's up to us to have New York represent those things as closely as possible. And if things make it to veer off to the right or veer off to the left or whatever in the wrong way, we have to be the ones who kind of correct it. And that's just how it's always been, unfortunately. Uh, and remember, the stakes are high because if, not, if we don't do this, this is New York, baby. This is gonna be New York right here. <laughs> That's Williamsburg right now. <laughs> I was gonna show you this because uh, they, I actually put some like diverse pictures there. That's cool, huh? That's all Williamsburg, isn't it nice? Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. <laughs> Bieber. <laughs> all right, uh, everybody give it up for your next comedian, Justin Bieber, everybody. Uh, no, just kidding. Oh, no. no, we're gonna keep this moving. That was the tour though, guys. You guys learned a little bit about Williamsburg. I, I, look, I, I definitely flew through that. I'm not good with these tech technological things, but, uh, but yeah, it, was, uh, you know, it is a great neighborhood. It got a lot of great history, and we'll talk about some more of all that stuff as we go. I try to fly through it a little bit. Did you guys understand all that? Okay, I hope there's, I don't know if we need uh, like uh, subtitles or something. I, I, I had a lot of coffee today, okay? <laughs> Who's asking? All right, let's keep moving.